So we're going to turn this over to uh, to Mike, and he's going to talk to you about hybrid turning or hybrid blanks. Um, I'm not going to tell you what he's doing because I don't know how to do them myself. So uh, we'll let Mike take care of that. So give us a minute to adjust the computer and the screen and the camera. Oh, we're good for now. All right. So I I request that everybody mute themselves and. Uh, I'd like to do this a little differently than the last ones, where if you do have a question, just speak up immediately, and we'll discuss it right then. And you can do that, hitting the space bar, right? Is that correct? Yeah, you can hit. You can just press the space bar to unmute you until you let go of the space bar. Or there's a uh, icon in the bottom left-hand corner of Zoom that says mute, unmute. You can use either of those. So everybody's muted right now. Uh, most people. Okay. All right, so I do have a quick presentation. Uh, I'm just going to go through it very fast. Slideshow. If anybody wants me to slow down or go back, just let me know. I don't want to watch for a while. There you go. All right. There we go. Now we can. All right, so I'm going to be covering <clears throat> epoxy hybrids, which can mean countless things. So I grabbed a few uh, pictures from the net. These are three spheres that uh, people have made, or uh, hybrid burls and epoxy. Uh, you can see people also put in uh, you know, trinkets or, or items in there. I've seen seashells in there and rocks and Made it look like a riverbed, you know. Your your imagination is the only limit here. <clears throat> Some of these are this is a, a single color resin. This one is two different resins poured together, same as this, as you can see it wisping down. Uh, it almost looks like a mountain range. Uh, people also make hybrid bowls, as you can see here. Here's a, a piece of wood that they added epoxy resin to the outside. Uh, and here's one where they painted the wood to look like a uh, like an underwater scene and then tinted the tinted the epoxy like a, a little bluish green color. And this is actually a base on the right. Uh, some other ideas people used was uh, lamps. So these have a light inside from the bottom that light up the resin. And this person, uh, I'm assuming, wanted the bubbles in there to <clears throat> give it that effect. These, I know they're square, don't kill me, but uh, you could turn them around. And these are just, they appear to be two by twos that they just smashed in half and built the resin in between them to make a lamp. So those are just some ideas that are out there. Here's some of the pieces that I've made using the process I'm going to show you today. Uh, these are maple burls with um, blue mica powder and epoxy. This one was made with red. The reason I did it with this one is you can see how cracked this is. This wouldn't have been turnable once I got into it, so I stopped and use the posse to fix it and allow me to, to turn this. There's a few more. As you can see, this one wouldn't have been turnable because this would have not just not been there. So you, you could have turned it, yes. It would have been more difficult. And I think this, this adds to it. Uh, here's one I did with a piece of wood that was not possible to use. This is uh, came out of an ant farm tree. Uh, so what I did was, you can see this line around it. I took a bowl, a plastic Tupperware bowl, put it upside down on it and traced the outline. Then I cut it to that shape, put it inside the bowl and then filled it with clear resin. And you can see this is what you get here. Uh, this was a nice piece of black walnut I had. I was uh, 
going to stabilize it with cactus juice and when I took it out of the oven it was extremely cracked so instead of uh, using the res uh, the cactus juice I decided to use uh, a blue epoxy <clears throat> resin and this is how it came out so you can see that all these cracks and voids were filled with that epoxy the pictures do not do it justice it's actually a very nice piece and one I was not willing to part with, so this is still in my collection. <clears throat> now here's a piece taken off uh, Rick Bugby's train here. <laughs> Just throw a throw a stump on there and see what happens. <laughs> and uh, as you can see, this is maxing out my lathe. Uh, it's a 16 inch throw, and you can see how badly it's cracked and split. So I did a little bit of shaping on it. And this picture on the right is where I decided that it was no longer, well, it was never safe to turn, but it, it was no longer safe in my mind to turn. Uh, I don't recommend anybody do this. It's, it's definitely not safe, but uh, it's something I wanted to do and stayed out of the way to avoid that. So my first process was to use tape. Uh, this is uh, made for wet conditions. So I wrap the outside and I wrap the inside up along these cracks and then filled from the top. As you can see in the bottom left picture, the outside looks pretty good. But the inside here on the left, there's a lot of lost resin because of the tape. It lifted or it spilled out. You can see a lot in the bottom here. So I've, I've gotten away from this. This process I've gone to something a little different which you can kind of see here with the glue gun you mask off an area and then you fill in along the top um, here's some cuts one of these I'll be doing today the other half of this one I believe um, but this is how they started off and you can see that you're not going to get a great bowl out of this so I filled them, I mixed up some resin, red, green, orange. That's what they look like once they're cured. Uh, here's another one I decided to do with pine cones. So I took a ball, a plastic Tupperware ball, put a piece of wood in the middle, so to save on resin. And I CA glued these pine cones to the wood so they wouldn't float when I filled it yet they would still be off the bottom. And this is, you can see here on the bottom left, that wood's getting cored out instead of resin. So that's, that's a lot of money right there saved. And here's the basic outcome. <clears throat> I used a little too much mica powder. I wanted this to be see-through with a little bit of sparkle like that, but I, I put in too much. So it is what it is. Uh, Turning resin, it makes a mess, <laughs> an absolute mess. These stringers go everywhere. You're completely covered. As you can see, it's wrapping around the um, tailstock here. It's spinning, it gets around the, the headstock. You have to stop at points to, uh, to remove that. If you get a good cut, you can have a 60 or an 80 foot length of one of these with, with no interruptions. And that is all I have for the presentation. Let me stop sharing. There we go. And I'm just going to come around the bench. Yeah, no, just so I know that I'm not losing the picture here. So the one I showed you, the ant farm, this is it. It was probably my second or third bowl turned. As you can tell, I have the dog dish shape. So I was just learning. But if you look through this, you can see all the way through and you can see all the ant trails inside. See it a lot better in person, but just to give you a 
an idea of, of what can be done. From the slide deck, this is the green one that we had made, that I had made. It's not finished up, it's not polished, so it's not really shiny yet, but um, this is what that would look like. And this is the red one that you saw, which also doesn't have a finish, but it's sanded and ready for finish. There's one more, there was an orange one, which is here. So when you're turning resin, if you don't have a, a good bevel cut and good technique, it's going to chip out and it hurts when it comes at you if you get too aggressive with the cut. And I got too aggressive with the cut on this one and you can see how bad that chipped out. So I took it off and I set it aside and all I'm going to do is mask that off and fill it back in so I can use, keep that as the, as the lip the top of the bowl because I didn't want to lose another half an inch because of this one gouge here. But if you can see the shape of this, that would have never been a bowl. That would have been, you know, firewood. Uh, you don't have to use it just to create hybrids. You can also use it to fix. So, this was cracked everywhere. So when I was I had some leftover resin from other projects, I would just pour it into the cracks. And now I can return this and it's the cracks are going to be gone. It's going to be a solid piece of wood again. This is the giant stump. Uh, it's, it's still not done. As I turned down, I found an air pocket that wasn't hit, so I still have to fill that back in. But this has been a lot of fills, and mostly because of areas like this, where it's set in. So what I'll do there is mask this off and then use a syringe to inject the resin in there instead of trying to pour it, because if you try pouring it, it's going to go everywhere but you can see every crack has resin in it. And there's another inlet on this side here that needed to be filled with the syringe. The bottom and then inside you can see that it's nice and, nice and smooth and it's gonna look good once it's polished up. Pretty piece of wood. And as I was doing that one, is where I got the extra to put into the base. So some other ideas I had, back to the pine cones. So you can see that that's a pine cone. I was going to cut this into coasters, a set of coasters, and then uh, you know give those away or whatever. And this is done with... <coughs> PVC. So I just blocked off the bottom and then you pour it in. You can see there's blue mic in there with another another pine cone. And how do you get that out? You don't have to break the PVC. You don't have to break this. You just smack, smack it on the table and it will slide out. And the bottom is open because I just hot glue on a piece of plastic. Okay. So you can peel that and push it through, but it usually comes right out when you smack it. <laughs> Some other ideas. Uh, this is a very old one, also. Notice the shape. Uh, I went through the bottom. A little bit too far. A little bit too much, yeah. <laughs> one last cut, right? Uh, yeah, didn't work out. So, this is another good example. You could um, put this inside of a bowl and then fill in, and it'll give you uh, however deep you want a resin on the bottom. And then uh, you can return it down to get a, a nicer bottom if you already have a good bottom, but it went through. Then you can just keep it flat and then fill just that hole and you'll have a circle. I know some people use coins or whatnot if they have this issue, but uh, you know, I mean, maybe 
three milli three mls of uh, epoxy will fill that no problem and that's that's very small amount and this one i was hollowing this uh, it's maple with purple heart and when i was hollowing it we got a little catch inside and it blew it apart so i glued this piece back on and then i'm going to mask the inside off and the outside and then you pour in the top and it'll make <laughs> another one of these it'll make the, the other half of it so just more options for you guys uh that the piece that messed up doesn't necessarily have to be thrown away it can be fixed one more blank here that I just took out of the pressure pot. Jay Lima had come over last night and uh, gave me a hand with this one. This was just a, a maple barrel. Piece similar to it somewhere, but it was only this this high on one side, and I'll just show you like this. So you you can see that this would would have never been anything except a couple pens. So we just filled that with regular resin, and then this will make a nice bowl. Uh, hey, so wait, can you mute everybody? Somebody is not muted and they, they can hear their TV in the background. Can everybody just take a quick look and make sure they're muted? <clears throat> My PC, please mute yourself. You can mute them. Go to participants. <clears throat> so this is another piece I turned uh, I just turned it into a cylinder and then it cracked I filled it with resin now I can return it into a vase or, or whatever and this is the, another one I had done when I first started, I tried a couple with plywood and someone asked if I could make a, a green one. So I did. So it's plywood, resin, plywood, resin, plywood, resin, plywood. Inside of here, each of these green has a smaller diameter piece of plywood. Uh, so there's only a, a layer of resin about this much. Because when I first started, I just filled the whole thing and hollow it all out and it all is on the ground so that was kind of a big waste of resin so i decided to go that route uh cut these up cut some smaller ones glue all these together and then i wrapped the outside up to the top and then poured it in through here so that's one way of doing it what's the point of the plywood um, just the, the plywood they wanted plywood it to look like plywood yeah. really yeah okay in fact, I have uh, one upstairs that I did with orange, and it actually looks really nice. Oh, wow. I'd have to see that. <clears throat> All right, so that covers what you can do. I mean, the options are endless. It's, it's up to you. Your imagination is the only thing stopping you from, from coming up with some great ideas. Uh, now, resin. There's all different types, right? You have amazing clear cast. By Luma Light, Luma Res by Luma Light. You don't want to use this. This cures faster than I can get into the pressure pot, <laughs> literally. Uh, the the clear cast I use with syringes to remove it from the top to get perfectly accurate amounts. Keep one. Make sure you mark them A and B. 
or E and H, epoxy hardener, however you want, do not mix them. <laughs> so those are, you, I mean, this epoxy has to be that accurate that you're using this array. Yes. I this, mean, as far as your mixture goes. For these, uh, and uh, that's only because I'm mixing three mLs, and it's small amounts for layers. So the smaller the amount, the more accurate it needs to be. It's less forgiving. If you're pouring, like I poured last night, it was uh, five cups. If I was off a little bit with five cups, that's not much. So with a larger volume, <clears throat> it, it's not as necessary to be accurate. Throw a lure down because people don't know about it. Some of the people didn't see your lures. You can just grab one. So this is this would be one of the layers that I use the epoxy on. And then you're using that one, the alumalite. I use the alumalite and the Envirotex for the bees. <clears throat> and this would be the Envirotex. And here's my AB syringe for each one of these. Is either one of those cheaper than the other, Mike? So I, I did go uh, and look up prices. So the Illuminite Clear, this guy, come, this is a 32 ounce package, two 16 ounce bottles. At Amazon, you can get it for $30. Hobby Lobby, you can get it for 24. And then uh, if you buy in bulk, like a larger, like a one gallon, it's eighty dollars. So mm -hmm. uh, you'd save time over my, uh, mm -hmm. money over time doing that. Uh, so that's pretty cheap. The Envirotex is the same. It was thirty-two dollars at Walmart, twenty-four at Amazon. Uh, thirty-two at Amazon, twenty-four at Hobby Lobby, and a gallon's pretty much the same at eighty. Uh, I was using these. This is a glaze coat that you get at Home Depot. It's uh, $75 for a gallon kit. I found a guy on Facebook Marketplace that was selling three gallons for 75. So I grabbed that because that's, that's really cheap. There's smooth cast resin. <clears throat> this also cures in about two minutes. So you have to be quick with that. I use this to cast uh, pieces, uh, uh, model car pieces and things like that from uh, a silicone mold. You can, uh, they have a product you can use to make a silicone mold uh, from whatever you want to make. If you wanted to make this stick, you can make this stick, whatever you want. Trinkets, decorations, whatever. You make a mold of it and then you pour this stuff in. It takes a couple minutes and it's out of the pressure pot, you're done. Uh, the other resins take quite a lot, quite a lot longer than that. And then another one I use is this Pro Marine. I use the tabletop epoxy. It's pretty cheap. This is uh, two gallons is a hundred bucks. So they also sell it in a one gallon, but that's 65 on Amazon. So, you know, if you buy two, you save them like 30 bucks if you buy the two gallon clip. Are all of these resins used for your deep pours or one specifically for lures, one for uh, I, I use uh, fill? The, I use the Envirotex for lures because uh, I can warm that small bottle in water. And it becomes very viscous, and I have the ability to use the um, syringes to get small amounts. And I, that's the one I like for lures. I have used that for bowls, uh, but it it gets expensive because you use quite a, a lot if you want to use a lot. So that's why I use the Pro Marine and this glaze coat I used last night and. Uh, as you can see, that was that was clear. That that was pretty good. Um, this is the injector, the flavor injector I was talking about. Uh, you can pick one of these up for a dollar. 
at the dollar store. And uh, I use this to get into the, the small uh, areas of that bowl. And once you're done with it, you pull it apart, put it in water, wipe it off, and you can keep reusing them. Uh, so, uh, another necessity, not a necessity, but uh, something good to have is a pressure pot. So, when you pour in mixed resin, you're going to get air bubbles. The, the air bubbles are manageable in thin pours. Uh, that's why most of these brands recommend a one eighth inch pour because uh, you can use a torch like this to just hit it and it pops all the bubbles on the, on the surface. But when your pour is two, three, four, eight inches deep, you're not gonna have that ability and you really can't get those bubbles out with a torch. So you have two options. You can use vacuum or you can use pressure. Vacuum removes the bubbles, but the downside is you there's more steps to it. So you would need to coat, coat the piece of wood with a layer of epoxy to seal it first. Once it's sealed, then you can put it in the vacuum chamber with your resin and it will pull the air from the resin. If you do not seal the wood, it's going to pull the air from inside the wood and you're going to have a mess, a lot of bubbles. Um, depends on how much air is in the wood, obviously. But uh, I, I prefer to, to do the pressure pot. The pressure pot doesn't get rid of the bubbles, but it pressurizes them to a to microscopic size where it's not visible to the naked eye. Um, so this is it's one step less and you really can't tell the difference you may get one or two bubbles somewhere where it's like hidden or but um for the most part i haven't i haven't gotten any using a pressure pot so this is what we'll be using today this one i got at harbor freight that was under a hundred dollars with their coupon i know people say it's it may not be safe whatever but um i haven't had an issue with it and I don't bring it up to the maximum pressure. I bring it up to between 45 and 50 PSI. It's rated to 60. Um, and it requires only a few modifications. Uh, I just added a valve on it and a filter. The filter is not necessary. I used it for over a year without a filter. So, but the valve, I like to have the valve because um, I like to put the air in slowly because if you don't it comes in here and it's going to blast in and it could, <clears throat> could blast uh you know mess with your mess with your piece inside it could knock it over it could blow in whatever so i just i put this uh lever on valve on so i can open it slowly and if need be, I can take it off and use my air hose for something else, put it back on. If it starts to go, if the pressure starts to drop, but I haven't had that yet. So I usually just put it in, lock it up and, and take it off. So once, you, once you pressurize that, you're pressurizing it with air, obviously, and then just disconnect it. It's, it's unless it leaks. You're yeah. So uh, what I'll do is I'll pressurize it and turn and lock it off. And then like, Five minutes, I'll check it, and then in 15 minutes, I'll check it. If the pressure hasn't gone down at all by then, it's not going to. Okay. And, um, and how long do they have to sit? That depending on the pour? No, it, it's, it's time-based. So it takes around 24 hours for epoxy to cure. Um, I, you can leave it in for, I think it's like 12. I left that one in for 13 last night. Uh, I usually do it like before I go to bed, I'll throw it in and then uh, when I get home from work the next day, I'll, I'll take it out. But usually anything over 12 hours, you're good. It, it's, it's cured enough where you're not gonna, uh, those bubbles aren't gonna expand again. But if you, 
you have the time, you want to leave it in for 24, it's not going to hurt anything. Anyway. Get back to this. As I was cleaning up, I did have some of those shavings. As you can see, this is what you get. It's not your typical, your typical wood shaving. <laughs> and it will stick to you and your face mask and arms and well, everything. Yeah. Absolutely everything will be hanging from your lights. It's it is it is a, it does make a mess, but uh, and are you using your good. regular gouges, or do you prefer yep. to use carbide? Energy? Right. Yeah. So a lot of people say to use carbide, um, and sure, it, it will work well, especially a negative rake. Um, but I, I just use my regular bowl gouge. If you if you present the tool properly, you will get a nice cut, a very nice cut, and you will know that because you'll just have this stream coming off, flying out of your bowl gouge. Um, if not, and you're too aggressive with the cut, it's going to chip, and it's going to shoot at your arm, and it stings. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not painful, but it's, it's not comfortable. Let's put it that way. Keep you awake. Yeah, it will keep you awake. <laughs> so, uh, we'll go through a few of the things we'll be using today using hot glue gun and what i use now is these file folders from walmart you get them on discount at 10 cents a piece uh normally it's got to say a dollar 97. yeah <laughs> going through the e on clearance so it kind of looked like a four but that'd be ridiculous uh dollar 97 so this is this is what I use. These work phenomenal. They're just plastic. It's just Mylar. plastic. Yep. And you can use anything you want, uh, like sheet protectors. But they're a little flimsy, so I use these because uh, a lot of these. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you got it. It's there somewhere, though. It's somewhere. Oh, I don't see it. But the, the clearest one that I did, you could see that it wasn't a perfect circle. So to, to fill these gaps, you would want something stiff. So you can make that that round when you when you glue it on. That helps. So that's why I use these instead of the the more flimsy ones. Oh, it's right here. So you can see these void areas where if you use the flimsy stuff, it wouldn't stand straight up. It would probably bow out and you want to get a, a nice circle out of it. So the other stuff you can use, just Tupperware, old Tupperware, uh, dollar store, that's a dollar store Tupperware, dollar store, um, went to a yard sale and got a big bag of stuff for $2, which this was included in that. Yeah, so ice cream, ice dishes. cream, yeah. anything, uh, old, uh, something, uh, Pickle jar or whatever. Not glass though. No. So we have those. Uh, these mica powders. You get this entire box on Amazon for under twenty dollars, and it comes with a whole assortment of colors: orange, pink, green, you name it. Uh, they even have Bear, and the name of the color is Bear. <laughs> uh, black, lavender, but all of them, all of them, whatever you want. And I happen to like this blue color, it's called C. So I'll be using that one today. 
or you can go clear. You don't have to use the mica powder. You could also use uh, acrylic paint. If you dab in uh, a couple of drops of acrylic paint uh, as you're mixing it, and you'll get the transparency or the opaqueness that you want. <laughs> For small pores, I use a, like a Dixie cup, not something requiring more than uh, a syringe. I'll use Dixie cups to measure. You can also use these for larger pores. I got these at the dollar store for a dollar each, and they are reusable. And these pouring mixing bowls, also a dollar at the dollar store and reusable. When using a pressure pot, you can use a drill to mix your resin because again, you're not gonna care about how many bubbles it creates because they're, they're gonna dissipate or shrink. If not, you can use a popsicle stick or bamboo stick depending on the size of your pour, with the popsicle stick, you wanna cut it flat on the bottom so that you can get into flat areas and get that scooped out, scrape across the bottom because you wanna scrape every little bit all around the sides to get that perfect mix. And one of the better things I have found is this silicone spatula completely conforms to the inside of your of your containers you can get right in that corner in the bottom it gets the whole bottom the sides these are the best these uh i got these in a two pack for 97 cents yeah uh, in a clearance aisle somewhere or you can buy them on Amazon. I think it's five for five bucks or something, which you can also wash them off and uh, reuse them. In fact, I used these two last night. So you're just washing those off with water? Yep. So or all the epoxy will I'll mix, do everything. And then <laughs> I have a bucket of water here that I'll just put these in. Once, once everything's in the pressure pot, because it's time related, you want to get it right, in as fast hour. as possible. And then I'll throw these in the water bucket. And then these two will have, uh, will be mixed in. First mix in one, second mix in the other. And uh, I'll use a wet rag and wipe those out and they'll be good to go. And then these each will have one, an A, a part, B part. And uh, so they won't be mixed together and you'll, uh, You'll just have to wash them out. They will never harden. And you can also use the small crap sticks if you're doing a uh, smaller container. And let's see here. This is just an old dog dish I got at the dollar store. So this I use for my overpours. So if uh, I'm going to try to fill this up and I made too much. I'll just pour the excess in here. So there's all different colors swirled all in this. So once this is full, I'll pop that out and throw it on the lid and see what it turns into. <laughs> or you can cut it into pen blanks or bottle stoppers, whatever you're into. But it's always a good idea instead of throwing it away, just put it in here. And I'm sure you can't see it on the screen, but if you see it in person, all these drips are all different colors. All right, so let's get started with one of these. I'm gonna have to do two different versions uh, with the two methods I had mentioned.
method, going to use this. I had this piece of wood and marked it out so that it would fit perfectly in the bottom. And that's it, that's done. And this will come right out. You'll be able to use this again. If you have something that's odd shaped or will not fit, or you don't want to um, use excess resin, you can do what I'm about to do now, and which is what I did last night to make this one. And as you can see, there's nothing on the outside. That's because I use a mold released from Casting Craft. What you do with this is you spray it on the plastic and let it dry. And then it just peels right off the resin. I don't typically use this. I use this for casting uh, into molds so that it actually comes out. But I wanted to have it nice and clear for today to show you guys. Uh, typically, I'll just turn the plastic off on the lathe. It comes off, no problem. So the first thing I do is find my diameter. It's gonna be here. And then I can trace that right out. Make sure it'll fit. So that's my line that this is going to sit on and where, where there's gaps like here, you'll be able to see and follow it around with the, with the uh, upright plastic. I'm typically not going to get it perfectly round. Uh, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, but you're going to be turning it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. This is just trying to keep the waste to a minimum. So, just gonna cut some of this excess off. Always leave a little extra around the circle because that's how we're gonna seal the uprights to the bottom using hot glue. I, uh, since I started using hot glue, I have not had a single failure. Like I did with the with the tape, the tape would fail, it would leak out, or it would bubble up uh, under pressure. Under the, in the pressure pot, the tape would bubble out, and you'd have like a lump of epoxy and not much where you had wanted it to be smooth all the way down. So the best thing to do is get completely set up before you start because you know you are on a time frame once you get started. So I'm set here. This guy's good. Um, I'm gonna measure on a flat surface that I made here with a just threw a little uh, uh, level on a piece of wood with a couple a couple shims since I moved my bench. It's not quite level anymore. Any standard hot glue gun will work. So the first thing I'm going to do is just put a ring around the bottom here. And put that right in the middle. It's good. And then I did not spray these because when I turn them, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna turn the plastic right off. Make sure they're clean. Flat side. And we're just gonna wrap it right around. So this is where the three hands come in. The three hands is helpful. 
Uh, if you don't have three hands, I recommend putting it a, about where you want to put it. So I'm just, my left hand over here is holding it tight to the wood. And then this one will bring it out to meet the line. So we're going to anchor this side first. You just want a little bit of glue, which I'll be able to show you after because it turns colors a different color. And that's set. So now we'll bring it around to where it's going to meet up, which is the end of it here. Adjust it so it lines up with that line you drew. And then just run a bead up this side. And I just want to press that glue in there. Now you should be able to see that dark line right here. You can see there's no gaps in it. So that means you have a complete seal all the way down. And that's what you want. And we'll take the next one. And we'll go right up with the hot glue. Attach that. And we can bring that right back around over here. So about there is going to be my perfect circle. Just pinch this together. Come in on this side. Run another line of glue up. Press that in. Can you see that line? Yeah. If you can see that line, there's no breaks in the line. It's all the darker color. So that means there's no gaps. So now it's completely, completely encompassed. So the next thing I'll do is a little lip here hanging off. So I'll just seal that down. like a double barrier. So that's sealed on the inside. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sealed on the inside, but I'm still going to run another bead up so I can see it on the outside and make sure I cannot see any of that plastic, any hole in that plastic. And the same with this one. Now it's good. Now we're gonna secure the side walls to the bottom and we're just gonna run a bead all the way around the bottom. If you had any gaps, um, the pressurized, the pressure inside of that pressure pot will push it out. So you just want to make sure that there's no gaps in any of these, or any of these pieces of plastic meat.
almost like doing cock. Right, take another look. All right, I see a little gap. It's going to come fill that back in. Gap there. And the rest of it looks good. So I'm done with this for now. So now you can guess what your volume is, but I feel that it's better to actually know. So what I'll do is use this polyfill. It's just little little beads. And I'll pour that right in. See where I want it to, how high up you want it to go. Little shake. A few more. They, uh, they do have a static cling to them, so I did wipe the containers with a dryer sheet to try to remove the static that way. It did help there, but not on my hands. So there we go. That's, I'm happy with where that's at. Just take your measuring cup. Back in. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate. Um, I just use it as a reference because I'm gonna I'm gonna mix more than I need anyway. Because you never want to do a project where you underestimated the amount you need. Uh, that usually turns into a nightmare. So then you have to wait, redo it all again. Uh, it's better to use a little extra and fill your dog and you use the fill the dog <laughs> dish because it's still not going to waste in a sense it is but in a sense it's not All these are going in that box and I don't care. I have a basic idea what I want. I just don't want them to be in here. And then I'll use press there. So it looks like we're at three and a half cups. So I'll pour four. You guys might know something better than polyfill, but it seems to work for me. Yeah, that did work.
<laughs> Especially on the containers where you can take it out. So now we know we know we need four cups. That's going to be two of each. Two of the hardener. Two of the resin. And um, I'm doing two. I'm going to put this one in the pressure pot first, and then uh, a piece of wood over it, and then this one on it, uh, just to save space, to, to to utilize that vertical space, I should say. So you're going to do them both at the same time. Both at the same time. Yep. I just have to grab that piece of wood. So I'll just. <clears throat> So I just snapped those two sticks so I can put them over this here and then put this one on top, just like that. Um, you can also use these if say you were, uh, you wanted to put wood in the center of a piece uh, of resin, um, something like this, you could, Attach these to the top, and then put it inside your inside your bowl. And now keep it off the bottom. So if you want to suspend something, you can do it this way. Um, the other way to suspend stuff, uh, like the picture of that sphere in the uh, with the little uh, gunship or Star Wars fighter or whatever that was, uh, they do that by uh, slow pouring in the mold. So they would set, you know, say you want to embed this, you would set it where you want it, and then a thin wire, which will set it in place. That's a bad example. Um, You say you wanted to put this bolt in there. You would lay pour it in so it's a thin layer, just enough to hold it in place, and then you can do a, a thick pour over the top. This bolt wouldn't float, but that that little toy would. So if you try putting it in here, it, it would uh, it would float up and get out of the way. Uh, and they had theirs suspended. So what they did was fill filled their mold to the point where that piece was going to go in. And then you would simply lay it on top of the resin, do a thin layer, bond it in, and then you can pour the rest over it. And then imagining this is still all resin, it would just be floating within that piece of resin. Uh, there's a lot of tricks you can do. Uh, I don't know them all, I'm still learning, but uh, I think it's pretty endless to what you can do. So it's definitely worth giving it a shot. All right, so now we'll mix them up. Blow these bowls up. Mix them up. Uh, let's see. Uh, go with the glaze coat. Uh, we'll go with the top. It doesn't really matter which one you use. This one's quite thick. Uh, what you can do to get it to flow smoother is, is warm it up. You can take a a bowl, fill it with hot water from your sink and leave it in there. 
that'll warm that up and it'll just flow really smooth. That's what I use for the for the layers because you want it to flow smooth around as it's turning on the rotisserie. So put this on my leveled piece of wood here. And what did we need? Two two cups each. Two cups each. If you don't have a pressure pot, you can pour this very slowly and from a height, and the air bubbles will come out as it pours down. Hmm. And the slowly really helps too. But again, but then you're going to put them back in when you mix it. Now you're going to put the air bubbles back in when you mix it. If you mix by hand, you can mix to get very little bubbles. Very right. You know, slow, methodical mixing where you can get it to, to have very minimal bubbles. And the, mim <clears throat> the minimal bubbles that you do get, you can get out with the torch. Yeah. They will always rise to the surface. So, it, more like a babysitting, you have to sit there and wait and then hit it with the gun, wait, hit it with the gun, hit it with the gun. Get the heat, get the pot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just get the pot. If you plan on doing it more than a few times, it's worth it. You can see how thick wow, that, that is. is thick. I should have reheated it. Go over, it's not a big deal, you just add a little more to the other side. Or pour some back into the container. Right, you could do that as well, yeah. Remember when you pour in the middle, it does take a little while for that resin to settle out to the edges. Just give it a second. A little bit more. That is not on there. I don't know. It's open. Maybe you can read the lines, but you can't. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're pretty damn, pretty damn close. Yeah. Okay. So next, these. The first one, now that they're measured. And this is where these really excel. They just completely conform to that outside edge. Yeah, 
and heating that up would have helped a little bit. If you heat it up, it, it makes it very viscous. It'll, it'll flow right in there, no problem. So the resin is almost always harder than uh, the hardener. I mean, always thicker than the hardener. So I like to pour in the resin first, but as you can see, it's taking a little bit longer because it's so thick. So I like to get that in there. And then when the other one, actually pours right in, then you can start mixing immediately. Some of these have different set times. Some are, you know, like I said, a minute, like that, those white ones for make your casting. Some are, you have like a 12 minute work time, 15 minute work time. Uh, some you can have up to a half an hour work time. Uh, just read the label and pick out the one that's going to best suit your needs. I would go to a, a longer work time to start so you get a process done that you're comfortable with. Um, because if you're not comfortable with the process and you start and you have a 10 minute work time and three or four minutes in, you realize, oh crap, I forgot to get the powder, I forgot to get the uh, stir stick, you know, then you lose another minute or two looking to find it. And you could potentially start to harden before, start to set before you wanted to, or you're finished mixing it. So get a long set time, work time to start with, get a routine down, figure out what you need and then get it all together like I did here. And then, uh, then you can go to a, a slower set, a uh, quicker set time. And then this is the hardener. As you can see, it's a lot more viscous. And you just pour that right in. Sure, you scrape the bottom, scrape the sides. These are great because it has the curve on it. It does the bottom and that inside curve at the same time. Highly recommend these if you're going to do any epoxy work at, in this scale. If you're mixing in like little teeny cups, you don't really need this. I still use them. Uh, in fact, sometimes. I will cut some of this off to get a smaller version of it if I'm doing working in smaller uh, containers because it, it really does, it works that well. You wanna to try to get as much as you can. You're not gonna get every little last drop, but I mean, for the most part, these do get every last drop. And this one had the thick stuff on it, so I'm just going to use this one to scrape that off. Drop a little.
Now I'm going to save one of these. I'm going to put the other one in the water bucket. This one I'm just going to wipe off with a rag. We'll use this to scrape from one bowl to the other. Now we'll mix, typically mix with a stick. Well, I'm going to use the drill because we have the pressure pot. Mix it until you don't see any more streaks. This is a lot easier to see when you're messing with a stick. There's all the bubbles I'm creating. So you can still see where they swirl. I'm running this up and down the walls to get off. So I'm not going to get all of it off the walls, but a little bit. And then I'll use the stir stick to get the rest off the walls and the bottom. I'm just gonna go around this and pull off what I can off the wall, off the bottom, and get that back into the mix. Wick this back off. Give that another mix with this. Because when you transfer from one mixing container to the next, you don't want to scrape those walls. You only want the mixed resin to go in for the next one. Or so they say. So most, most companies making resin recommended a two-stage pour or two-cup pour, I think they call it. Uh, I don't use the two-cup two -cup pour when I do uh, small batches. I feel like I can uh, get it mixed properly without going to the second cup. With that said, I also don't scrape the bottom uh, when I'm doing a small mix because any of the unmixed resin that you scrape up, if you do the sides of the bottom, will uh, it will not harden and it could potentially ruin your project. Uh, you'll have you'll find some sticky spots here and there. And it, it's just not good. So I'm just scraping the inside here. Across the bottom. That's good enough. So since I scraped the sides and bottom, I'm going to wipe this off again. Just in case any of that is uncured resin or unmixed resin, rather. That way when I scrape it out of here into these areas, I won't have a, a sticky problem at the end. So 
Mix this up. This looks good. I'm not seeing any streaks already. So let me go ahead and add the powder. So this is a rather large batch, but a little bit of this powder does go a really long way. So I'm gonna throw in one in. See that? It's really not much. That's two. And we'll mix it to see where we're at. This isn't very dark. This is, this would be a nice light translucent blue. So right now another thing you can do is I'm gonna pour a little bit of this into this cup. And then I'm going to take that same powder and make it nice and dark. Just to add a little effect. A little dark. <laughs> So you can see the difference in the colors there. So I'll use this one with this guy. So first, four in here. Bring that about up to the top of the line there. And then add, it's gonna seep around the sides a little bit because this wasn't completely round. So there's gonna be some more over here. But I'm gonna let that flow in itself while I fill this one. So at first I'm filling just around the outside just to kind of get that bottom covered without uh, getting any air gaps in there. If you do end up getting an air gap, you can fix it later because it'll be on the bottom. And you'll be, uh, you can actually drill into it and add more resin if you want, or you can leave it. Mike, did you say that the, uh, that dye is opaque, whereas the acrylic paint makes it clear? Yes, well, I mean, it, you can use both to do either. It just depends on the amount you use. Okay. So the acrylic paint, you'd use a, uh, you know, a drop or two, maybe two drops for what, how much I just poured, and you'll it'll be nice and see through, but have like that tint, a nice colored tint to it. Um, but the mica powder, uh, it does color the color at all and this will be a nice transparent you can't see through it right now because it's just bubbles uh but it'll 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 look nice once it's done you'll be able to see through the through the colors so. <clears throat> Scrape the rest of this out because this was all mixed. So there's no worry of any unmixed resin. I typically pour this into my overflow pot. 
but I figured I'll put a little, a little bit on top of the wood too, just in case you never know. Could look good. If it doesn't, it, you turn it off. So I need to be turned down anyway. And once you put this in that pressure pot, it's gonna push this resin into any crevice that's on that wood. So if there's a little crack, it's going in it. It'll be completely sealed. It's nice. To me, it's a great alternative to cactus juice. <laughs> <laughs> that that cactus juice didn't work that well. And then well, you can take the darker one on this guy here. You can just do it like this. And that'll go down into the other color and make some cool patterns. There's quite a bit left over, so I'll do it on this one too. The other thing you can do is pour it hard and fast from one side. And I'll give like a blast out effect uh, similar to one of the first uh, spheres in the slide deck. You could see almost like fog coming down the mountain. That's how they, that's how they uh, create that effect. And then the rest will just come in here, which will also allow me to demonstrate the uh, butane torch for the bubbles. Good enough for now. Put that in the water. I could put that in the water, but I'm not going to. And then we'll toss this in the pressure pot. This guy will go in first. Then the two slats. This one on top, which is tight. There we go. Uh, I use a piece of wood that's cut out here to put angles on top. They're not easy to turn. And you really need to crank that yeah, down. Yeah, you need that. So, so cross, right, then across. In the next pattern almost. Now you want to let this in slow, that's why I have this valve on here. So 
especially with that one so high to the top. If I turn this all the way on, it would blow that resin right out. It'd be all over the whole inside. So you want to go slow. You can hear when it's getting getting to the point where it's where it's filling up, then you can open it a little more. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but I can almost not hear it anymore. So I'm gonna open it. And now it's all the way open. And we are at 45. Well, 47. So 47, I'm good with that. I don't need the air hose tonight. So I'm just gonna leave it hooked up. Uh, if you did need the air hose, you can just close this valve and this is going to stay pressurized unless there's a leak somewhere. So if you did need it, close the valve, mark in your mind where it's at, and then check it in 15 minutes. If it's less, then you have a small leak and try retightening it, bring it back up to pressure. But if that's the case for me, I'll use the air hose for what I need it for and then just plug it back in and reopen the valve. So you leave the air on overnight? Yep. <clears throat> yep, no problem with that. Yep. And then now that we're, that's good to go, that's in there. My next step is to clean these holes and uh, this stuff with water because I want to use it again. I mean, if you don't want to, it's not a big deal. Sure. It would have cost you two bucks for those, but I'm a cheap bastard, so <laughs> I'm going to clean them up and reuse them. Then uh, once that's done and, you know, tomorrow, I'll pull them out, take a look, and uh, turn them up. Now, would you turn those tomorrow or do they need to cure further than that? Um, I have turned them uh, the next day, 24 hours later, and I didn't have any issues with them. Um, but I know people say to let them fully cure. Fully cure after that. So it's definitely a good idea to let them fully cure. Uh, when I first got into it, I did try just turning them. I didn't have an issue with it. Uh, but maybe the, it was the type I was using because these different types of epoxy resins that some cure in 24 hours, some completely cure in 48, some are, uh, you know, maybe 72 or, or more. So it really depends on the epoxy itself. And uh, I didn't touch on it, but there are, there are a lot of, there are quite a few different types of resin, not just epoxy resin. Um, there's urethane resins and uh, UV resins, uh, urethane. Uh, so each has its own purpose. For me doing this, I, I find epoxy to be the best. Uh, the other resins are quite harmful to your health. You need uh, like breathing. Uh, respirators and other safety equipment. So that's not really for me. Uh, the UV resin's nice. I know a lot of people use that on Lurus. Uh, the good thing about the UV resin is you, you can put it on or wherever you're going to put it. Uh, and then it will not cure until you hit it with a, a UV light flashlight and then it will cure. So that could be a good option for someone uh, that needs a long work time. I'm just gonna clean this last one here. And I typically just throw the rag away. Um, you can use paper towels. I think if you use paper towels, it would probably cost you more. Probably. Than the dollar it costs to get another one. <laughs> but the two mixing cups, uh, they did not have a mixed resin in them. So that'll never cure. 
uh, those just need to be washed out. I uh, try not to do it in the kitchen sink, uh, but I, I suppose you could. I just take them outside and do it. This one started to harden, so this one might get. I know they, they also make like an epoxy inhibitor for our use with paint brushes uh, for people that paint with epoxy and it'll never cure once it's in there. So, you know, if you're, you're not in the cleaning like this, you could always just uh, take it and put it in that stuff. It takes the, all the epoxy off for you and then it's ready to go next time you want to use it. I just heard about this. So I'm going to look into it a little bit for uh, the lures because I use one brush per lure because they just, uh, I, I don't know a way to clean those that's effective. So I may take a look, but not likely that I'll ever get it because the brushes are like 100 pack at Harbor Creek or whatever it is, $2 or something. Yeah. <laughs> So that's really for time. Uh, that's all I have. Does anybody have questions with that? Anything else? Unmute everybody. No. Hey, maybe there's no question. There's uh there's three in the chat. So if you have questions, you just unmute yourself at this point. And we'll open that up to generally any question. The chat was just you. Spread nobody's saying. Oh, uh, someone's talking, we just can't hear. Okay. Did I turn it on? Thank you very much, Mike. That was uh, very interesting. So our volume was off for a minute. So if you had a question and we didn't answer it, it's because the sloppy guy doing the computer forgot to turn the forgot to turn the volume up. Nice so job, Mike. Thank you. Really appreciate it. It was good. Thank you. If if uh, possible, would you be able to uh, just uh, make a list of the uh, different products because I couldn't write everything down fast enough. Mm. Sure, definitely. Yeah, I think we could probably put a link in the newsletter as well as, uh, you know, if you want an individual list, um, email Mike. Everybody knows his email. Yep. MikeCotton01 at Gmail. Um, you know, just say, hey, I need a list. And um, maybe if he does one list, it'll be good for the newsletter. And he could, you know, email it to you individually if you, you know, and then if you need a private question, Mike's really good at. Yeah, I'm always available. If you send me an email, I will get back to you. Yeah. So I want to just remind everybody, I don't know how many people were here when we started, but for the December meeting, which is uh, primarily show and tell in the elections, uh, please email Mike some photos. You don't need to give him a description um, as what we'll do is when he displays your pictures on the screen, you'll be able to talk at that point. So, you know, it, it is going to be primarily the whole meeting. So I'd like to get, you know, better to have too many than, than not enough for that particular meeting. 
So take some good pictures of some of the work you've done. MikeCotton01 at gmail.com. And we'll put on a nice little presentation for December. Uh, January, we have two meetings. Uh, Cindy DeRosier, first Thursday of the month in December. Our meeting, I'm sorry, uh, yes, in December, our meeting's the 17th. And then we have a really good demo lined up for January. You don't want to miss that one. So I'll leave so these uh, I'll leave these meetings on in case you guys want to chat with each other. And uh, Mike and I'll wrap it up. Have a good night. Hey, Mike, will yeah. you post will you post on uh, the website your finished product? I don't think so we see how this all turned out. Um, a picture of the yeah. finished product? Absolutely. Yeah. I planned on I plan on taking them out, taking pictures once they're out, and then uh, I was going to turn them up into the uh, you know whatever. Okay, and they'll then, be ready uh, for the show and tell. They'll be ready for show and tell if I get them. Okay. I should be able to get them done by the end of uh, before I can send out the next newsletter. So I'll put the finished pieces in there, and then I'll bring them to the show and tell anyway. Okay. Thank you. Yep, no problem. Excellent. Yeah, good time. Good time. When did we start? Um, it was shortly after seven because we ran out of time. Oh, wow. But, yeah, that was that was over an hour and a half. Oh, oh yeah, no, it was perfect. Perfect. Nice. Perfect. All right. Thank you, Mike. Talk to you later. Thanks, Thanks Roland. Roland. Um, hey, Bob, um, you're off next week, you said. Um, would it be easier if I came up during the week uh, for lunch? I don't need you to follow me back. I'm sure I can get help loading that into the school. Um. Yeah, I can. Yeah, that 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 should work. Um, okay. And I can follow you back if uh, um, if needed, because it, it's it is easier with two people. Yeah, I mean, I've got family that can help me get it in, nieces, nephews, etc. Uh, oh, okay. You know, I don't want to tie up your day. If we get it on the truck, I'll I'll do the rest. Okay. All right. I will. Uh, I'll touch base with you at the beginning of the week, and we'll set up a good day for you. Sounds good. I'm around. I'm around every day for the most part. Yeah, I, I should be around most most of the week. Um, I've got a phone con for for work Monday morning, but that's about it right now. Okay. Yeah, I've got this weekend, and I believe next weekend I'm going to do. Uh, there's two shows. Take uh, uh, the uh, Warwick, Rhode Island, taken outside uh, event. Um, so normally I would come up on the weekend, but I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do both events, uh, COVID and weather permitting. Yep. Hey Mike, I got a quick question. Did I see a uh, laser engraver over there yeah. on the other shelf? Yes. What kind is it? It's an Elks maker. Hang on. Hang on. I got to do a little, uh, oh, there we go. I'm looking at the wrong computer. Here we go. There it is. Yeah, this is Alex Maker. Um, it's a 2000 uh, milliwatt. And uh, it goes around 200 bucks. You have to build it yourself. Yeah. And uh, all these blue pieces here, here. I printed those at work on a 3D printer just to make adjustments easier for me, but they're not necessary. And uh, I'll show you how it comes out. Look how it Yeah, nice. So that's, uh, that's my actual signature. 
I signed a piece of paper and I put it in the computer. And so that is 100% my signature on the bottom of every bowl. Yep. And it takes about, it's under five minutes to, to burn that. And the circle is that to burn? No, yeah. the circle is, uh, I used a piece of foil mica on the lathe. Oh, okay. And cut a little divot. Okay. And yeah. then you jam that from okay. mica and it okay. burns, burns the circle. But put all this. And then uh, for my serial number, I just change it before I uh, burn the next bowl. But it works really well. I mean, uh, I got mine from banggood.com. And they're one of the hottest sellers on that site. I, uh, I ordered one about two months ago, and it shipped about two weeks ago from Gearbest um, in uh, Orturo or something like that. Um, it uh it got a lot of high ratings and and reviews at different sites but um my brother opened up a kitchen store uh, in the middle of a pandemic um yeah. in uh, montana and he wants me to make bowls and uh for him to sell and uh so i figured to try and put some type of you know maybe put his logo on the bottom of, or something yeah, there you go. Yeah, they they work excellent. Once you once you dial them in, they're they're great. And this particular one is infinitely expandable. Uh, all these rails, it's not limited to just the size. If you get bigger rails, it'll do as big as you want it to do. Yep. So uh, I'm pretty sure almost all of them are that way, uh, unless it's contained. Some of them come contained in a, like in a, a fixture, a box. Yeah, my, the, the, that one is supposed to come, um, you know, so that it can be uh, modified. Nice. Um, but, uh, um, you know, I'll really know once I actually get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, Highly recommend getting another set of glasses, one that's certified for the color and spectrum of your laser. Yep. Because mine came with some, but you know, it's shipped from China, so I don't really trust that they're the top quality. They didn't have any uh, certified safety markings on them. Yeah. So I, I picked up another, another pair. They were cheap. It was, it was, they weren't the cheapest ones. They're like 30 bucks, but I figured, Hey, if it's going to keep me from going blind. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I figured once I get it and, and actually have some documentation, hopefully not in Chinese, then <laughs> I'll talk to, I, I've got some guys at work that, I mean, that's their job is working with lasers. So get some advice from them. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, the laser will tell you what the wavelength is. And yeah. You just have to get glasses that, fall within that like that wavelength falls within the glasses and you could yeah because uh i did look at the laser once by accident and uh it's it's extremely bright and i couldn't really see red and green that well for a little while not like long like a couple minutes but right it's um a red green laser so a blue blue green laser so it's uh definitely eye opening no pun intended right right <laughs> yep yeah so i have no idea when it'll actually get here if it's on a slow boat from china or but the fact i haven't gotten it yet i'm guessing that it's coming by boat <laughs> right uh, another thing to look at is a uh, software called Lightburn, and I can send you an email on this. Yeah, actually, the, that was one of the reasons why I selected that unit was because um, so much of the software was um, Windows only, and Lightburn works Windows and Mac. Oh, it comes with Lightburn. No, it doesn't. I have to buy it, but yeah. they were that was what was recommended. It comes with software that works on a PC, yep. um, but 
they recommended if you had a Mac, um, Lightburn works with it because it's um, a generic system. So right. I, that was one of the reasons why I, you know, went with that that uh, that unit. The um, yeah. it's the Artur uh, Laser Master. Oh, I've actually heard of that. Yep. Okay. So. Yeah, that Lightburn software is incredibly powerful. You'll be able to do whatever you want with it. It's awesome. It's easy oh, to good. navigate once you get the hang of it. Yep. And uh, like I, I got the I, I got a paid version, which you have to pay. Yeah. Uh, but it it wasn't much. I, I don't remember exactly how much, but I think it was like under fifty dollars or around. Yeah, I think it's like thirty, forty bucks. Right. But well worth it. It's miles above the software that came with it. Yeah, the software that came with it, I was burning like all the way through wood, or some spots it wasn't even showing up where others it did. So broken lines. Uh, as soon as I switched that light burn, uh, no issues at all. And it's oh, super cool. easy to configure. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to another toy to worry about. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> gotta have them. It's yeah, fun. I know it. It really adds a professional appearance to the to, to your signature or whatever you put on the bottom. And then you can do other stuff too. Right, right. And as I told my brother, I said once I got his logo in, I can you know make other stuff for him. But my main reason was to you know be able to have a professional you know uh, marking on the bottom of the bowl. Right. Yep. And I do like your idea of of like a serial number yep and uh the way i do my serial numbers is you can see that it is 11 18 15 b so 11 is the month 18 is the day and i did one of five bowls that day and b is the year so b is 2020 because i started doing this in 2019 so A is 2019, B is 2020, because I heard that it's not a good thing to put the actual date on the bottom of the bowl, because if someone comes up when you're selling it and they see it and it's five years old, why didn't anybody else want this? Right. So I went with a letter scheme on that. And it's really not a number that anybody could decipher unless I told you what it meant. So. No, it's, I, I, I like that. That's a good idea. Thanks. I didn't think of that. Mm -hmm. I didn't think of that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Nice. I'll probably have more questions once I actually get it and try to use it. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Yeah, whatever you need, just hit me up. Uh, uh, so learning, doing a power grid setting is probably going to be your best bet at first oh a what it's a power grid uh, okay. basically uh, you can uh, get it from Lightburn's website and you load that up and it will burn uh, like a grid of lines and you can pick the spot on the grid where it's the correct depth and color and uh, you know ex exactly where you want it to be across the whole project and you pick that grid setting and that's how you enter your uh, because it goes by speed and power how fast is it moving and how powerful the laser is going okay that's how they determine the depth of the uh, burn or the darkness uh, so you print that grid and then you have a hard copy of all right I want it to look like this and you you click it and you know that's where what the whole project will look like so that's a good thing to do as well yeah now i was told um that one of the challenges is um if you're doing something that's different sizes um that the challenge is to develop a rig to get the what you want to mark to lift it to the same height every time so that you don't have to keep adjusting the lasers is that yep uh, i've seen people build like a 
uh, like a adjustable shelf inside of the framing. Yep. Where they have like a knob and they crank the knob and it'll move it up and down with like a stop block. They'll put a stop block, like they'll put a stop block across here and then crank it up till it hits that block. And that's where it's at. And then you don't have to adjust the laser. I adjust the laser. I don't do enough to, to need that to, to, to build something like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I do however many bowls, not, not a ton. Like I did five and I had to adjust it four times and it takes seconds to adjust. So. Oh, okay. Not so not, not a super, you know, very, uh, tight tolerance. No. So easy. basically there's a lens right here. Yep. That you turn one way or the other until you, uh, until it's like, it'll be like blurry or like elongated the laser line. And you just turn it until it's a point, a dot. Once it's a dot, it's done. Oh, it's okay. Literally seconds just to turn it. Oh, okay. I thought it was a lot of different adjustments. No, just to adjust to that. And the other thing uh, I wouldn't want it fixed for is sometimes uh, the bowls that I have are very uh, concave on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So if you adjust it to the very bottom, it's going to be different at the top of that curve. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Cause if you say you're focused here, it's going to be out of focus here. So what I do is I bring it, to the middle and focus it on the midpoint of the curve. And then it's equal throughout. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, no, perfect sense. Yep. Try and find that happy medium to cover the entire bottom. Right, if, it, if it's at different depths. Yep. I imagine if it's too, too concave, you're not gonna be able to um there's probably a limit to to what it can adjust to right and i mean the, there are things you can do to you know you burn one section of it and then stop the burn and burn the readjust and do the the, the second section you know what i mean yep that software is so powerful you can pick and choose what you want to do it at any specific point in time but i've had a good at least a half an inch off from bottom to top and i, I didn't have any issues with that oh wow yeah. that's good yeah. now it just needs to get here kind of a little way is away yes yes but i was it took about a month before it shipped, so I'm oh, just geez. happy that it shipped. Yeah. Yeah, everything coming out of that has been pretty slow lately. Because I, I found the same unit on Amazon, and, and they could, you know, deliver it next week, but it was $100 more. And like you said, I'm a yep. cheap bastard, so. <laughs> yep, aren't we all? Worth the wait. <laughs> this is an expensive hobby. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> Yeah, hundred bucks. That's I'm gonna be going to cool. Harbor Freight and picking up a pressure pot and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, I'll shoot you an email with the request for the different materials. No, okay. And and you know what you think is, you know, your recommendation to to start out, um, start out with you know which brand or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And it would, I mean, it depends if you're going to do like a really something big or not. You know what I mean? Uh, Mostly. If you're just looking to try it, then I would go with like the small Envirotex $25 box from Hobby Lobby or something along those lines. Try it out, see how you like it. But if you're just going to go for it, then yeah, I would, I would go for a gallon. Yeah, because I've got a whole bunch of um, burl pieces. You know, I had gotten a, a 
good sized box of scraps. And this would be the perfect um, use for those. Yep. Yeah. I see a lot of people doing that, with like uh, bottle stoppers and even pens or bowls. It's, it's a great way to utilize those small pieces you wouldn't otherwise be able to. Yeah, and I, I really like those sphere ideas. I'm not so sure I can do a sphere, but the, the, the idea is good. Yeah, same here. I haven't tried one yet. <laughs> the idea is good. My technique is not. Right. Yeah, that's where I'm at. <laughs> but eventually I'll give one a shot. Yeah. They do look cool. The, um, one of the guys I was following on YouTube for a while, uh, Heath. Um, was it Heath something? Um, and he was doing spheres all the time. And he was, I mean, it was some really phenomenal stuff and, and not just spheres, but that was what he was famous for. Yep. Um, uh, I've got one of his web his website bookmarked someplace, but it, um, I, I remember Heath something. Um, and, uh, it was pretty uh pretty interesting watching you know him turn this stuff and you know he would have um every once in a while he would have uh um uh, he'd give them away give give stuff away yep um but yeah i'll have to try and see if i can find that uh find the website again yeah they're awesome they, 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 you can make a uh, spear jig yourself too Oh yeah. Yeah, it goes in your tool rest and it's basically a uh like a carbide. Charlie, <coughs> and Charlie you just, Hopkins maybe. Yeah, you just it turns on a like a U axis and then you move the piece, uh, you know, the sphere in the cup and do the same thing. That never moves, so it's always a perfect sphere. Carter actually sells one. Carter, too, yeah, but it's expensive. Right. Yeah, no, they, oh yeah, I've seen Carter, so that's yeah. yeah. I mean, Eddie, 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 uh, can't remember his last name right now. He hasn't been there in a while, uh, but he used to come to all the meetings when we were in Riverside. Um, Eddie, he does the trade shows. Keegan. And, Keek, was it Keegan? Or? Ke Egan, Keegan, yeah. Yeah. He made, he made one. Um, talk with him. He made a spear, uh, a jig. Uh, he made his own. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you or, look, if, if you it wasn't that. him, it was Charlie that made one. Charlie Hawkins, or him. One of them made one, and one of them bought one. Yep. So one of those two guys will uh, will tell you. Yeah, if you look at that Carter jig, I mean, it's it's not difficult to replicate. So I have to. Uh... Ask them about that. Because those do look cool. And, and the idea of, you know, having a light coming up through it too. Right. <laughs> and the thing with those burls, if you find one burl that you like, uh, you can make a mold of it, right? With the silicone resin. Yep. And then you can pour uh, your regular resin into it and make 40 of them if you want and you can make them in all different colors you can make them clear you can, you can paint them afterward whatever you want so you'll always have that one barrel that you made i mean it won't be wood but uh sometimes it's cool to to have the same shape and and replicate yeah. it i did like the uh the, the one that you had with the x-wing fighter that was cool yeah yeah that was the that was one of the first ones I saw, and I I've always thought that was awesome. So that's why I threw it in there. Yeah. Well, great. It was very informative. Um, very much enjoyed it. So. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank right. you. Have fun. Bob. Have a good evening. Thanks you too. All right. Bye. Bye. So I got a question. You I don't know if you know the.